absolute value inequalities. And let's just take a look at the big idea. And it's basically saying absolute value inequalities can be re represented by compound inequalities. And we learned about compound inequalities last lesson. So, um, basically what we're going to do is say, okay, we've got um, inequalities that we're going to be working with that are, you know, absolute value inequalities. So, and we're going to take them and break them down into conjunctions and disjunctions, okay? So, if we have a uh, absolute value inequality that is less than or equal to, we're going to, that's called a conjunction. If it's greater than or equal to, it's called a disjunction. So we'll take a look at uh, a table here. And so basically we're saying, okay, less than or equal to is a conjunction, or there's going to be a conjunction. This table here gives the, the general forms. And the table is excellent because it really breaks it down into, into a bunch of different ways of thinking about it. So if you can't quite uh, conceptualize it one way, boy, you can take a look at the words and think about what the words mean. Or you can, you can actually see the compound inequality, the part that we're trying to get to. And then, of course, the graph, which is the, the concrete example of it. So in, uh, in this chart here, or in this table here, we're saying that K, anytime you see K, it's going to represent uh, an algebraic expression. Let's just take a look down here. The absolute value of K is less than A. K is any algebraic expression, 2x minus 3. Uh, 4y plus 2, you know, whatever, and a is a real number. So the words are the set of real numbers less than a units from 0, right? That's basically what we're saying when we're talking about absolute value. Now, it can be broken up if we have an absolute value that is inequality with less than or equal to, it can be broken up into a co compound inequality, and we can say k is greater than the opposite of a and k is less than a so remember a is any real number and k is an algebraic expression here's the concrete here's what it looks like this is the picture of what we're looking at right uh, k is less than a well here is a and so it's everything less than a and we're saying that k is greater than negative a so here's k greater than negative a right going in this direction including everything up to the A and everything from the A down to, but not the A. That's the open circle. It does not include the negative A or the A, and we know that and get that, we get that information because it's less than, not less than or equal to. So if we drop down here, then we can see the instance where it's equal to, and the only difference would be that it is a, the circle is filled in. It's completely filled in. Right? That's the only difference. An open circle versus a closed circle, less than, less than, or equal to. So let's take a look at a disjunction. Okay, so for a disjunction, again, <coughs> the K is any algebraic expression. A is uh, a real number. And we have the absolute value of K is greater than A. And the words, the set of real numbers greater than A units from zero. Here is the compound inequality. Basically, this is what we're going to have to do what you're going to have to do to be able to solve absolute value inequalities. You're going to have to break it down, break it down this way, and then solve each one of these individually. So say k is less than the opposite of a, or k is greater than a. Here's the graph. We label uh, the a's, uh, a and the opposite of a, and since k is greater than a, we put a circle, open circle around A, and it's greater than, so it's everything to the right of A. Then the opposite of A, we circle it, open circle it, and K is less than the opposite of A, so everything to the left. Let's take a look at an example. Here we have an example. The absolute value of X is less than or equal to 3. Our um, algebraic expression is just X, and what is A? Well. <laughs> A is just 3, right? Here we go. We can label these puppies, K and A. We can come down here and say, well, <coughs> that we have the uh, X or K is equal, to, or is equal to X and A is equal to 3. So wherever we see K or A, we just put an X or a 3. It's that simple. Uh, to create the compound inequality, X is greater than 
negative or the opposite of a and x is less than 3. We come over here and we just instead of using the a we say the opposite of a which is 3 and a which is 3 and voila there's our graph it's sitting right there it's that simple so well the directions say okay the directions say write it um, write the absolute value of inequality as a compound inequality write the solution in interval notation and graph the solution set so we already wrote it as a compound inequality and we graphed it already all we need to do is create the solution in interval notation and and that'll be straightforward that'll be just x is an element of um, going from negative 3 to 3 and remember we use the brackets to signify that it includes the, the, the values so it includes negative 3 and 3 uh, uh, okay straightforward right and then we have uh, x is greater than or equal to negative 3 and that makes it a conjunction and um, x is less than or equal to 3 okay let's take a look at a, uh, a disjunction so we have y is greater than um, Five, the algebraic. Well, let's just come down. Let's just find the form that it looks like. Is it going to be a, b, c, or d? Well, here it is. Here it's c. Absolute value of k is greater than um, a, right there, where um, k is equal to y and a is equal to five. So you could just take and put here. It's so sweet. To create the compound inequality, it's going to be easy. It's going to be y is less than the opposite of a, which is 5, or y is greater than 5. Okay? So for the comp, so remember for the disjunction, it, we're going to be using or. And then we can just say negative 5 and cross that out and say 5. I would I would use this chart if I were you. It, it makes life a heck of a lot easier. Or create one for your, create one yourself. Create one for yourself to, to be able to use. So look, we've just created, using the chart, the chart helped us. We just created the compound inequality and we, we uh, created the graph, right? Because that's, that's two things that we have to do. And <clears throat> so now all we need to do is write the solution in interval notation. So that's just going to be, well, let's cross these out so we have the picture. We've got negative 5 and we've got five so once we have the picture we can create the interval notation because it's just going to be y is an element right and from negative infinity going up to negative five union um, and <coughs> union five going to positive infinity and we use the parentheses because it doesn't include the 5 and remember infinity is not a number so there's no way you can include it so that's why we use the parentheses versus brackets remember the brackets mean um, includes the number and the parentheses means does not include the number and that's how you know which one to use okay in a disjunction the solution is the set of all numbers that belong to one or other of the solution sets of the component component inequalities yeah you know that so the thing is is what we're coming up with is a come on coming up with a solution I forgot to kind of drive that point home but we've got to get to we've got to get to that point we got to understand that what we're talking about here on this line this red arrow going to the left of negative five and the red arrow going to the right of five that that represents the solution that we have all the solutions, every possible value that we can put in for a while that will make this, this uh, absolute value inequality true. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. That's what we're trying to find. Okay, you, that, that is so important. Let's take a look at this one here. It says solve the absolute value inequality, write the solution in interval notation, and graph the solution set. Okay, so we have a whole lot going on here. But the first thing you got to do is figure out, is it a conjunction? Um, or is it a disjunction? So you go back to your chart on page 144 
and you find out it's a disjunction and then you figure out how, how to rewrite it. Well, we're going to rewrite it as 3x plus 1 is less than or equal to negative 19 or, right, this is our compound inequalities that we're going to write, 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 19. So now that we have a set of compound inequalities, we could just solve these. We go, you know, minus 1, minus 1. We get 3x is less than or equal to negative 20. Divide by 3, you know, straight ahead, divide by 3. x is less than or equal to negative 6 and 2 thirds. Okay, uh, well, x is greater than 6. Look at that. Now we have, or, or, so the potential solution set, any solution set is, you know, is, is x less than negative 6 and 2 thirds, or x is greater than 6. So let's take a look at how we can write that. Well, remember this is or, and the notation is going to be x is an element that goes from negative infinity all the way up to negative six and two thirds union oh, oh that's got to be a bracket here because it has to include six and two thirds so then <coughs> from six to positive infinity but it can't include positive infinity we'll just come down here and take a little dot fill it in go to the left right because it's everything it's everything less than negative six and two thirds and we'll put a dot here kind of uh, equal distance almost not quite but and call that six and go everything to the right a positive six because it says x is greater than six it says it right there greater than or equal to and so these these squiggly lines represent the solution set to our original equation or original uh, absolute value inequality of 3x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 19. So that's what we have here. That's the graphic solution. This is the notation. Okay. Here's the compound. Here are the compound inequalities. Look at this one here. So we've got um, 7. No, no, actually, I don't want. Yeah, this is the one I want to take a look at. We've got the absolute value of 7r minus 4 is less than 4. Five. Conjunction, disjunction, well, what do we got? Right? It's a conjunction. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? So now we break it up into the compound inequalities, and it's going to be 7r minus 4 is greater than negative 5, and that's the conjunction, 7r minus 4 is less than 5. To solve these puppies, uh, plus, plus 4, plus 4, we get 7r is greater than negative 1, <laughs> divide by um, 7, divide by 7, we get r is greater than negative 1 7th. Uh, what do we have here? And we get r is less than 9 7 or uh, what do we want to call that? R is less than one and two sevens. We can call that, call it that. Okay, so now, whoop, where's my paper? We've got that. How, how would we write that in notation? R is an element that does not include negative one seventh and goes all the way up to uh, nine sevenths and does not include a parentheses because it is we don't have the equal sign oh, let's say that this is maybe one right here negative one so one seventh is going to be kind of negative one seventh is going to be negative one seventh maybe about right there that'll be an open circle and we'll say one is right here positive one and this would be maybe about uh, one and two sevens open circle and boom everything in between this represents our solution set to the original absolute value inequality okay i uh, hope you found this helpful